Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Happy Independence Day. And welcome to evening prayer from St. Michael's and All Angels Parish. We begin with a general sentence found on page 62 of our Books of Common Prayer. Blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord and happy the people he has chosen to be his inheritance. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. In a moment of silence, let us reflect upon those ways in which we have not met or followed God's desires for our lives. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and save you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people, pardon and peace that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now turn to our psalm for this evening, Psalm 119, which is found on page 629. We start at verse 24, 25, sorry and conclude at verse 48. My soul cleaves to the dust. Give me life according to your word. I have confessed my ways and you answered me. Instruct me in your statutes. Make me understand the way of your commandments, that I may meditate on your marvelous works. My soul melts away from sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Take from me the, the way of lying. Let me find grace through your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set your judgments before me. I hold fast to your decrees. O Lord, let me not be put to shame. I will run the way of your commandments, for you have set my heart at liberty. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. 
and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness preserve my life. Let your loving kindness come to me, O Lord, and your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I have a word for those who taunt me, because I trust in your words. Do not take the word of truth out of my mouth, for my hope is in your judgments. I shall continue to keep your law. I shall keep it forever and ever. I will walk at liberty, because I study your commandments. I will tell of your decrees before kings, and will not be ashamed. I delight in your commandments, which I have always loved. I will lift up my hands to your commandments, and I will meditate on your statutes. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 9, beginning at verse 24. But Pharaoh's daughter went up from the city of David to her own house that Solomon had built for her. Then he built Milo. Three times a year, Solomon used to offer burnt offerings and sacrifices of well-being on the altar that he built for the Lord, offering incense before the Lord. So he completed the house. King Solomon built a fleet of ships at Ezion Gerba, which is near Eloth, on the shore of the Red Sea in the land of Edom. Hiram sent his servants with the fleet, sailors who were familiar with the sea, together with the servants of Solomon. They went to Ophir and imported from there 420 talents of gold, which they delivered to King Solomon. When the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, fame due to the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a great retune, with camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind. Solomon answered all of her questions. There was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. When the queen of Sheba had observed all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the seating of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his valleys, and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. So she said to the king, The report was true that I heard in my own land of your accomplishments and of your wisdom. But I did not believe the reports until I came and my own eyes have seen it. Not even half had been told to me. Your wisdom and prosperity far surpass the report that I had heard. Happy are your wives, 
Happy are these your servants who continually attend to you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God who has delighted in you and set you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loved Israel forever, he has made you king to execute justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold a great quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again did spices come in in such quantity as that which the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Moreover, the fleet of Hiram, which carried gold from Ophir, brought from Ophir a great quantity of almug wood and precious stones. From the almug wood, the king made supports for the house of the Lord and for the king's house. Lyres also and harps for the singers. No such almug wood has come or been seen to this day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now recite the Magnificent found on page 67 of our Books of Common Prayer. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior. For you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you, from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 12, beginning at verse 18. When morning came, there was no small commotion among the soldiers over what had become of Peter. When Herod had searched for him and could not find him, he examined the guards and ordered them to be put to death. Then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. So they came to him in a body and after winning over Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for a reconciliation, because their country depended on the king's countries for food. On an appointed day, Herod put down on his royal robes, took his seat on the platform, and delivered a public address to them. The people kept shouting, The voice of a god! and not of a mortal. And immediately, because he had not given the glory to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms. But the word of God continued to advance and gain adherence. Then, after completing their mission, Barnabas and Saul returned to Jerusalem and brought with them John, whose other name was Mark. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For this evening's reflection, I chose to look at a part of the passage which we just read from Acts. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and Redeemer. Amen. When King Herod learned that the Apostle Paul had escaped, Apostle Peter had escaped, 
The guards assigned to secure Peter took the full brunt of his wrath and frustration. If you had failed him in your duties, you were of no use to him, and your life became forfeit. How contrary this is to God's way. The soldiers were in serious trouble. They could not figure out how Peter had escaped or where he had gone. Herod believed that Peter was aided and abetted in his escape by one or more of the guards. A man simply does not up and vanish from a prison and then, further to that, vanish into thin air without leaving a trace. This, of course, is the only human explanation. However, it does not take into account any divine intervention or action, as was in this case. Herod had a plan to continue courting the favor of the Jewish people by ex executing Peter. This plan, however, had now collapsed and backfired on him, and his anger was excessive. Every time I read this portion of the passage, I am reminded of how many of our leaders pay lip service to God, but their hearts and minds are self-centered, and if something should go wrong, it is always someone else's fault, never their own. Thankfully, there are very few circumstances these days where leaders can put a person to physical death. But nonetheless, they will attempt to destroy your lives in so many other ways. After Peter's escape, the furious Herod went down to Caesarea to take up residence there, turning his back on Judea and the Jews. Many today believe that they can get away with their sinfulness ad nauseum. They behave as if there will never be any consequences to their actions. Yet, as we have seen from this passage, eventually, God will say, that is enough. Your rope has come to an end and you must now pay the price for your behavior. Many times, our leader's road to earthly success is littered with persons who they have used, abused, maltreat, mistreated, and maligned. Things look good to them and to those who do not believe that there is God, a God who will judge us in the end. We now have a moment here today to pause and consider this truth, that we will all be judged in the end. Have you been ill-treating people in any way under the guise of that's how business is done or this is how I am? You need to right this wrong before you are judged for the destruction in people's lives that you have caused. To me, these verses from Acts are a sober warning. We read, Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, so they came to him in a body, and after winning over Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for a reconciliation, because their country depended on the king's country for food. On an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat on the platform, a place of prominence, and delivered a public address to them. The people of Tyre, the leaders of Tyre and Sidon, kept shouting, the voice of God and not a mortal. And immediately, because he had not given the glory to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and died. God does not tolerate anyone attempting to steal his glory. Herod had way overstepped his bounds and also the boundary between man's empty praises and mamagai and that which is reserved solely for the one true living God. Here there is a valuable lesson for each of us in the events surrounding that day when a king accepted praise 
that belonged to God. The people shouted, the voice of a God and not of a man. This seemed to appease, please, and soothe Herod's anger and stroke his ego. Necessity often causes us as a people to stoop and utter empty and false exaltations to others. Tyre and Sidon had in some way angered Herod. However, they sought peace because their cities and people depended on Herod's kingdom for food. Angered by their actions, whatever they were, these city-states had to come and, as they say in other parts of the Bible, sue for peace with Herod. Tyre and Sidon were forced to play nice and make up with King Herod. Herod's sin, in addition to the murder of the guards and persecution of Jesus' followers, which we read earlier on in this chapter from Acts, was his failure to give God the glory due to his holy name. He had usurped the honor due to God. If that was the straw that broke the camel's back as far as God was concerned, we cannot say for certain. What we do know, however, is that Herod was judged immediately. And immediately because he had not given the glory to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and died. Despite the popular thought in some people's minds that everyone goes to heaven, these words from today's verses do not support this idea. God's response to our arrogance and that which is often displayed by leaders, self-appointed or otherwise, can be swift with and without warning. His, his judgment for self-glory is eternal, revolting destruction. Herod becomes food for worms. Bullies and tyrants in whatever form they may take have no future. Yet, they continue with their self-praise and folly. They forget or are ignorant that God has fixed a date and time when he will come in righteousness to judge all. How terrifying when God holds an individual to account for what he or she has done in this life. Judgment in this life is always unattractive. I do not want you to imagine that divine judgment is always so sudden or dramatic, but be assured, it is always sure. Every one of us has been given free will, and we have also been given umpteen chances to repent and reconcile with our God. King Herod, however, had turned his heart away from God, to the point where he sought to replace himself as God and he also sought the praise of people instead of encouraging them to praise the Lord. He had gone too far. He had exhausted most likely God's patience and that was that. I don't think I need to say any more. In recent, in recent years we have witnessed increased persecution of the church and the rejection of the gospel has also grown. I have often wondered from time to time if God will also smite these anti-God leaders, as I term them. As for me, I will take a lesson from Herod's demise today. I am no leader, but I have no desire to become worm food. So I urge you today to give God all the glory and praise. Do not get lost in self-glorification and empty human praise, because this will ultimately lead to your demise. I have said these words to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now continue. <clears throat> with 
the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Suffrages on page 70. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Let us now recite the Colic for Proper 17, found on page 177 of our Books of Common Prayer. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all goodness, all good things, Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Back to page 51. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, Creator of day and night, giving rest to the weary, renewing the strength of those who are spent, bestowing upon us occasions of song in the evening. As you have protected us in the day that is past, so be with us in the coming night. Free us from evil, sin, and fear, for you are our light and salvation and the strength of our life. To you be the glory for endless ages. Amen. Grant, Lord, that we may be faithful to you without turning aside, worship you without growing weary, serve you without failing to diligently seek you, happily find and forever possess you, the one and only God blessed forever and ever. Amen. Let us now turn to page 80 where we will recite the prayer for sound govern government. O Lord our governor, bless the leaders of our land that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to other nations of the earth. To the Prime Minister and members of the cabinet and all in administrative authority grant wisdom and grace in the exercise of their duties. To the members of the Senate and the House of Assembly, and those who make our laws, give courage, wisdom, and foresight to provide for the needs of all our people and to fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. To the judges and officers of our courts, give understanding and integrity that human rights may be safeguarded and justice saved. 
And finally, teach our people to rely on your strength and to accept their responsibilities to their fellow citizens, that they may elect trustworthy leaders and make wise decisions for the well-being of our society, that we may serve you faithfully in our generation and honor your holy name. Let us now turn to page 86, where we will recite a prayer of thanksgiving. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and for the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times, in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. My brothers and sisters, let us turn to page 54. I omitted to recite the canticle for today, which is the song of Christ's glory. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in the likeness of men. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, forever. Amen. Let us now turn to page 73, where we will recite the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Do enjoy the remainder of your Independence Day holiday. And as we go forth during the week, let us ponder as to if we are giving God the glory and praise which are rightfully His. Do have a blessed evening all. Thank you.